Roman, many thanks for joining us here in Davos. Uh, what's the mood? What's the buzz? What are the mega trends that everyone's focusing on in the conversations that you've had so far? So I think uh, if I if I come to Indian companies, for example, I think the mood is really optimism. The mood is growth, and not just you know one x growth, but really looking at three x, four x growth, which is much more than what I've I've ever seen. The second bit is there's a lot of uh, conversation around AI and also the responsible or trust-based mm. AI, including trust. Um, one of the things that we are seeing is while well, lots of Indian companies have done phenomenally well, but there aren't too many that can say that they're the trusted partners or mm. people have a lot of trust. And that's important as investors come into India to partner with our companies that they need to build the trust index. Mm. And in terms of AI, I think that's the big, uh, uh, big buzz around here. Mm where we're seeing a lot more companies adopting AI, uh, but in more in the areas of productivity, more in the areas of cost, not so much as, as much as we think should be in the area of innovation. Uh, and business model changes. So I think that's sort of the, really the buzz around DevOps. You know, when you said that uh, Indian companies need to uh, uh, try and ensure that they're seen as trusted partners, but we've had a large software export industry for the last, you know, four decades almost operating out of India. Would that be the case if we were not considered a trusted partner? So I think in the area of technology, obviously, clearly we are. But I think the, the big shift that I'm talking about is more manufacturing. Mm. Uh, so really there are a lot of companies that are shifting towards India. Uh, and I think one of the things is to say, how do we build a lot more trust in, in that amongst all different stakeholders? That I think is, is the opportunity here mm. and now. And if India can capture that manufacturing opportunity, I think that'll really, really, you know, really push India towards our 5 trillion, 7 trillion, 10 trillion. On manufacturing, because everybody at this point in time is looking at supply chain diversification and India is a beneficiary uh, along with other countries as we look at uh, companies cutting down their exposure to China. Any industries in specific where you believe that India today enjoys the competitive advantage, the competitive edge that you believe could gather further momentum? So clearly, like you mentioned, I think technology as an industry, India has an advantage. I think the movement towards being a software service provider to an AI provider, an AI capital of the world, I think is the big, big opportunity. There are skills, but I think to move that shift is important. Second is clearly electric. I think that is the big area and renewables, which I think are two things that go in hand in hand as well. Um, and also, I think, on the new age technology, specifically semiconductors, for example, that is a big, big opportunity for us. I think we're still in the design, but as soon as we can get into the manufacturing, the fabrication, the, you know, the packaging, others, I think that will be important. But also, in the value chain, I think another big opportunity is agriculture, because India's agriculture productivity, when you compare to most countries in the world, is, is slightly lower. So if we can actually push that up even to averages, I think as a, as a country, we will do really, really well. Mm -hmm. So what's the one uh, big uh, thing that you're focused on from an energy perspective, an energy consumption perspective, and converging that with the kind of explosion that we're seeing on data usage and now, especially in an AI era? So, uh, Shireen, we, uh, we've been um, really saying that we want to build some innovation out of India, and we created something called the Enterprise Conscious Code, uh, an initiative. This initiative was really about looking at uh, in the world today, 3% of all emissions are caused by software. Uh, it's likely to go up to 14%, which is quite significant. So this is about 1.58 billion uh, tons of carbon dioxide that is generated. So what we've built uh, a an, uh, uh, software or a tool is to basically look at any website in the world uh, and identify is this uh, you know, digitally efficient or an inefficient, all right? Is the software code that is written efficient or inefficient? And also, is it inclusive? So we really look at three things, uh, people, planet, and profit. So people is really about whether it's inclusive. So it, does it mean colorblind people? Does it mean astigmatism people can actually uh, you know, access the website? Uh, planet is really about anything that we believe. Uh, if, you take a, if you take some of our top websites today in India, and if you traverse the whole website, you would probably uh, spend 10 kilometers of petrol right, for one user. And sometimes we have 30 to 50 million users, so you can you know, uh, understand the magnitude of it. Uh, and we've built techniques where you could use compression technology to actually take a 400 MB file and make it into a 400 KB file, really. And the third is, of course, profits. Mm. If you consume, we believe, 
in most codes written today, 60% of the code is never used. So if we actually uh, do all these three things well, uh, do a governance around all the digitization that is being done, so these are all digital assets, we believe that the profitability of our companies, in addition to energy and in addition to being inclusive, all will improve. Well, Romil, thanks very much for sharing those insights with us, and we wish you the very best as you spend uh, the next few days here in Davos. Uh, as always, thanks for your time. Thank you, Shireen.